Members, I now wish to inform members that 22 bills have been received royal assent. The Water and Sewerage Services Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Special Educational Needs and Disability Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Budget Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Assembly and Executive Reform Assembly Opposition Act Northern Ireland 2016, and the Royal Traffic, the Road Traffic Amendment Act, Northern Ireland, 2016, all became law on the 23rd of March, 2016. The Health and Social, Sur Social Care Control of Data Processing Act, Northern Ireland, 2016. The Environmental Better Regulation Act, Northern Ireland, 2016. The Legal Complaints and Regulation Act, Northern Ireland, 2016 became law on the 11th of April 2016. The Employment Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Credit Unions and Cooperative and Community Benefits Societies Act Northern Ireland 2016 became law on the 23rd of April 2016. The Housing Amendment Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Mental Capacity Act Northern Ireland 2016, the Rural Needs Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Shared Education Act, Northern Ireland Act 2016, became law on the 9th of May 2016. The Justice Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Houses in Multiple Occupation Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Health and Personal Social Services Amendment Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Licensing Act, Northern Ireland Act 2016, Addressing the Bullying in Schools Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Health Miscellaneous Provisions Act, Northern Ireland 2016, Fisheries Act, Northern Ireland 2016, the Land Acquisition and Compensation Amendment Act, Northern Ireland 2016, became law on the 12th of May 2016. The next item of business on the order paper is a motion regarding committee membership. As with other similar motions, it will be treated as a business motion and therefore there will be no debate. Clark, please read the motion. That Ms. Carol McCullen and Mr. Declan McAleer replace Ms. Katrina Ruan and Mr. Jerry Kelly as members of the business committee. Call Ms. Katrina Ruan to move the motion. Moved. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The, the next item of business is the filling of the office of Minister of Justice. I will conduct the process for filling the office in accordance with procedures set out in Part 1A of Schedule 4A of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and Standing Order 44A. I will begin by asking for nominations. Any member may rise and nominate another member, a member of the Assembly, to hold the office of Minister of Justice. If members rise from more than one party, I will call first the member from the largest of those parties to make a nomination which is the Convention for Other Items of Business. I advise members that the Act requires that one nomination must be processed before a further nomination can be made. I will therefore only take one nomination at a time and put the question on that nomination. If the Assembly resolves by parallel consent that the member nominated shall be Minister of Justice, and the person takes up office as required by the Act and standing orders, no further nominations may be made. I will only call for further nominations if those conditions are not fulfilled. The Business Committee agreed that a member making a nomination may speak for up to three minutes, following which there will be an opportunity for debate on the nomination, with members also having an opportunity to speak for three, up to three minutes. As the person nominated to fill the vacancy shall not take up office until he or she has affirmed the terms of the pledge of office, 
contained, contained in Schedule A to the Northern Ireland Act 1998, after the question has been determined, I will ask the person nominated to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office. Before we proceed, members may find it useful if the Pledge of Office is read into the record. Clark, please read the Pledge of Office. The Pledge of Office is as follows. To pledge to discharge in good faith all the duties of office, commitment to non-violence and exclusively peaceful and democratic means, to serve all the people of Northern Ireland equally and to act in accordance with the general obligations on government to promote equality and prevent discrimination, to promote the interests of the whole community represented in the Northern Ireland Assembly towards the goal of a shared future, to participate fully in the Executive Committee, the North-South Ministerial Council and the British Irish Council, to observe the joint nature of the offices of First Minister and Deputy First Minister, to uphold the rule of law based as it is on the fundamental <coughs> principles of fairness, impartiality and democratic accountability, including support for policing and the courts set out in paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement, to support the rule of law unequivocally in word and deed and to support all efforts to uphold it, to work collectively with the other members of the Executive Committee to achieve a society free of paramilitarism, to challenge all paramilitary activity and associated criminality, to call for and to work together with the other members of the Executive Committee to achieve the disbandment of all paramilitary organizations and their structures, to challenge paramilitary attempts to control communities, to support those who are determined to make the transition away from paramilitarism, to accept no authority, direction or control on my political activities other than my democratic mandate alongside my own personal and party judgment. Paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement says, we believe that the essential elements of support for law and order include endorsing fully the police service of Northern Ireland and the criminal justice system, actively encouraging everyone in the community to cooperate fully with the PSNI in tackling crime in all areas and actively supporting all the policing and criminal justice institutions, including the policing board. Members, the Pledge of Office has now been read into the record of proceedings and I will now proceed with the nomination process. Do I have a nomination for a member to hold the position of the Office of the Minister of Justice? Mr Martin McGuinness. Uh, with the, your permission, uh, Mr Speaker, I would like to nominate, and it gives me great pleasure to do so, uh, Claire Sugden as our new Minister for Justice. As uh, many in this House will know that over the course of the last number of weeks, the First Minister and myself have been charged with the responsibility of putting an executive together, uh, and we made it clear from the very outset our determination to do so. There has been a lot of discussion uh, in the course of uh, that process around who would be Minister for Justice, and it is no secret that the First Minister and myself did offer the position of Minister for Justice to the Alliance Party. Sadly, uh, the <coughs> Alliance Party uh, turned that offer down. Uh, our thoughts then turned to uh, who would be uh, Minister for Justice, and we recognised that unless we had a Minister for Justice, then essentially we would not be able to put a government together, and in all probability an election would follow. So there ensued a number of other discussions between the First Minister and myself with a view to uh, finding uh, a Justice Minister and finding a candidate for that position who we had confidence in to do what is a very onerous and challenging responsibility. Uh, after a number of discussions with uh, Claire, and Claire came into this House, as we all know, in the sad occurrence of the death of uh, David McLarty. But Claire has been in this House for several years, and uh, we have been very impressed by her performance. Uh, we had that conversation with her initially. We've had a number of conversations since that, and uh, she has expressed herself uh, very uh, determined to do this job in order to ensure that our society continues to move forward, uh, assist us putting a, a government together, and she can be assured of the, the First Minister and my full support, and I have no doubt whatsoever she will enjoy the full support of all of our ministerial colleagues to be appointed in, in the course of this sitting of the Assembly. Uh, she is a very progressive uh, young woman. She obviously is highly political, uh, certainly enjoyed the support of her constituents in the course of the Assembly elections, and we have every confidence 
in her ability to do this job, and, and it does give me great pleasure to nominate her as our new Minister for, Minister for Justice. Thank you. <clears throat> Claire Sugden has been nominated. Claire Sugden, do you accept the nomination? I accept. The nomination is now open for debate. I remind members that they may speak for up to three minutes. I call Mr. Simon Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first opportunity to congratulate you on your appointment as a Speaker of, of this House. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to rise and, and speak in support of the nomination made by the Deputy First Minister of Clare Sugden to be our new Minister of Justice. Uh, and what is, for I think many reasons, uh, a historic day in the political history of, of Northern Ireland. I think that Clare's appointment as Justice Minister will symbolise the new generation of leadership that is emerging, uh, not just in this Assembly, not just in the Executive, but right across Northern Ireland. Uh, as the Deputy First Minister has already said, Clare has, has proven herself uh, in this place since replacing David McClarty as a member for the East Londonderry constituency. Many inside and, and outside of this chamber have been very impressed by her contributions uh, to debates and the proceedings of this House. Uh, she has at all times been thoughtful, uh, she has been measured, and she has always been constructive. Uh, I think we have all seen that she possesses the skills and abilities to be uh, a very good minister. Uh, and of course, uh, she has no mean feat for an independent member. She has proven herself to the electorate uh, of East Londonderry with what was a, a tremendous uh, result in the recent Assembly elections. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I know that, that, that Claire is, like me, a, a child of a, a prison officer, uh, and I know that that um, personal experience, as well as her uh, undoubted capabilities, will stand her in good stead and will make her a, an excellent Justice Minister serving all of the people of Northern Ireland. Thank you. Mr. Mike Nesbitt. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Let's, um, let's start with the quiz question, shall we? Um, the clue, the speaker's in the house. This house of cards is falling. And good will come of that only if the jokers at the top come crashing down too and do not get up again. Let that one float. First Minister McGuinness prides himself as the custodian of the Good Friday Agreement. He will single-handedly defend the values and the principles of 1998 against the whole world. Well, what is more important as a building block than to haunt the mechanism that ensures that unless you have the seats here in this chamber, you do not get the seats down the hill around the executive table. The hunt is at the basis of this cross-community devolved set of administrative uh, setups. But after 2010, what happened to 2011 with 16 seats? The Ulster Unionists got one seat at the executive table. The SDLP with 14 won, but Alliance with eight got two. What a corruption of 1998, Mr. Speaker, but as nothing to what is happening today because with just one seat in this chamber, never mind the hunt, with one seat, you get a seat at the executive table. Is it any wonder the Ulster Unionist Party opposed the devolution of policing and justice in 2010? And what happened? What happened to the snowmen of the DUP? Not in my lifetime, not in the lifetime of this institution. I would give way to the member. The member obviously wants to speak. The member clearly wants to speak from a sedentary position. Can I ask the member to address all his remarks to the chair? Sir, I certainly shall, Mr. Speaker, and I hope I get the opportunity. So we are not in favour of this because it is a corruption of the Good Friday Agreement. And the person who said this house of cards is falling and good will come of it only if the jokers at the top come crashing down too and do not get up again is our new Justice Minister, who is propping them up again. And to the DUP, I remind them of this, said by the same person in October of 2015, one side of the House, the largest political party, has decided that its dirty, inconsistent mess is more important than moving Northern Ireland forward. Sounds like a great choice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Colum Eastwood. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Can I begin uh, 
on a personal basis um, to wish Claire Sugden well. Uh, and on the same vein, can I uh, congratulate David Ford on a, on a, on a job well done? Uh, it is clear, though, Mr. Speaker, that we are in absolutely no position to support uh, a nomination for somebody uh, when we have corrupted the process. Uh, we corrupted it once before, and we're doing it again now. Uh, our strong view is that the position of Justice Minister should be allocated uh, by the haunt. And what is even more disturbing, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that even though we've had some evolution in our politics this last few weeks, the opportunity to evolve our politics uh, even further today has been missed. And it's very clear to our electorate, Mr. Speaker, that this is a position for which no nationalist need apply. Call Mr. David Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is clear by the announcement that has already been made in the Great Hall that Claire Sugden is to be the Minister of Justice. And like Colm Eastwood, I will personally wish her well. The F Deputy First Minister referred to the fact that the post was first offered to Alliance. And it's no secret that we put forward five proposals which we believe would have made this place function better and would have delivered better for the people of Northern Ireland. And those proposals were rejected by the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. As is their right, they have sought to look elsewhere, and they have now asked Claire Sugden to carry out the job, and that is their right, and clearly there are other numbers in this House to carry that. Though I cannot personally support that nomination, not because I have fixation with the DeHaan system, which I don't, but whilst I cannot support that, I would certainly wish Claire well in the task which clearly lies ahead of her. She has, as the Deputy First Minister said, onerous responsibilities to carry out. I certainly am well aware of the major issues which are faced by the Department of Justice, the massive issues which confront that department over budget, over programme for government, over the specific issues for justice, over the ongoing issue of reforms which have been put in place over the last few years and which need to be continued through. The fact that the new minister has at least a lack of public preconditions gives me some concern as to how that will be carried through. And indeed, in the words of Harold Macmillan of some years ago, there is no doubt that like health and unlike most other departments, justice has events to face. So there will be significant, very significant challenges ahead. I know from my background that I am handing over a department which has made a positive contribution over the last six years, which has seen justice fully embedded into the devolved sphere and participating with other departments in a joined up, to some extent, government. But there is much that lies ahead which needs to be done, and there are very significant challenges. What we have achieved was based on the proposals which Alliance put forward before we accepted the job in 2010. That work must continue. And from the point of my colleagues, we will judge the new minister not on her age or her gender. We will judge her on how far that reform program continues. Mr. Stephen Ignew. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to wish Claire Sugden very well and every great success in the role. Um, on a personal level, we, we've worked together in this what was formerly known as the Naughty Corner. Um, and I know she is very capable and very able of doing the job. That said, there has been an opportunity wasted to take another step in normalising politics in Northern Ireland. I would question why in 2016 we're still treating justice differently and we're still maintaining a provision that says we have to keep them in out. And we've heard from the First Minister, she said there cannot be a Sinn Féin Justice Minister. Oh, there can be a Sinn Féin Health Minister, Education Minister. Um, we'll see how those ministries are divvied out today. But we still treat justice differently, and I do think that sends a signal to say we're not moving on, we're not ready to move on, and I think that is a shame. It's no secret that, that my party um, did have discussions with the First and Deputy First Minister in relation to the Justice Post, but we were very clear we would only serve in government if we felt we could progress our agenda, if we felt that we could achieve more in government than out of government. Um, but I think the reality was our agenda was very different from that of the DUP and Sinn Féin, which is why I'm delighted that myself and Claire Bailey will be in opposition 
uh, will be here to hold those parties to account and will do all that we can to progress the Green Party manifesto uh, through our work on these backbenches, through private members' bills and through holding the, the, the executive to account. Well, Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Claire Sugden is an able, likable, affable person. Uh, no one could think otherwise. But she has to know, uh, as indeed we all know, that this is a nomination of desperation. A desperation by Sinn Féin and the DUP to extricate themselves from the cul-de-sac of their own construction uh, when policing and justice was devolved prematurely, when several political lifetimes turned into the several days of the Hillsborough talks. Uh, and uh, in consequence, they had this impasse. I like Claire Sugden as a person. And indeed, I like some of the things she said politically. One of those thoughtful, measured speeches that Mr. Hamilton referred to her making was, of course, when she famously and accurately described the leaders of this administration as jokers. How right she was. And yet today, yet today, for the sake of office, she is willing to become the patsy of the jokers. And that, I think, says a lot about this position. Seduced into office by the jokers. Less than two weeks ago, Ms. Sugden boasted in this House that she was an independent. Well, no longer, I'm afraid, because today she has become the placewoman of Marling. And whether or not she finds the uh, making up the numbers on the dark side as fulfilling as she thinks, time alone will tell. Thank you. Members, that concludes the debate. Before we proceed to the question, I would remind the House that the Northern Ireland Act 1998 requires that the resolution must be passed by parallel consent. The question is that Claire Sugden be Minister of Justice. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. Aye. The question will be put in three minutes.
Order, order. Members resume their seats. The question is that Claire Sugden be Minister of Justice. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Do we, aye. Do we have tellers? Order. Tellers have been appointed as follows. Tellers for the eyes are George Robinson and Raymond McCartney. Tellers for the nose are Daniel McCrossan and Robbie Butler. Clear the lobbies. The assembly will divide. Eyes to my right, nose to my left.
Secure the doors. Order, order. The members resume their seats. Clark, read the result. 93 members voted, of which 63 voted aye, 67.7%. 37 nationalists voted, of which 25 voted aye, 67.6%. 54 unionists voted, of which 38 voted aye, 70.4%. Two others voted, of which zero voted aye, 0%. Zero Eight members who voted in both lobbies are not included in these results. The motion is carried by parallel consent. Parallel consent. Unfasten the doors. I will now ask that Claire Sugden to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 in the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Thank you. I can now confirm that Claire Sugden, having affirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office, has taken up office as Minister of Justice in accordance with the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I offer Claire Sugden my hearty congratulations. Let us move on. 
The next item of business is the appointment of ministers. I will conduct the process for filling these offices in accordance with the procedure set out in Section 18 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and Standing Order 44. I will ask the nominating officer of each political party in the order required by the formula contained in Section 18.5 to select the available ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it who is a member of his or her party and of the Assembly. If a nominating officer declines to nominate, I will invite the nominating officer of the next political party determined by the formula to nominate a member to hold ministerial office. When all ministerial offices have been filled in accordance with Standing Order 45A, I will ask any parties that declined to nominate if they choose to be recognised as part of the official opposition. I call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it who is a member of her party and of the Assembly. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, I select uh, the Department for the Economy and I nominate Simon Hamilton. Will Simon Hamilton confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Mr Speaker, I confirm that I am willing to take up the Office of Minister for the Economy and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Simon Hamilton is now Minister for the Economy. I offer Mr Hamilton my hearty congratulations. I call on Guinness as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his party and of the assembly. Uh, my August, uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I would like to choose the Depart Department of Finance and uh, appoint Martina Muller as our new Minister for Finance. <clears throat> Will Marcino Mueller confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Jevniam, Akshon Korlia, Jevniam, Gomei Tilchinok, Efiganara, Aragadi Shokas Parsner, Aklaku, Akos Jarevim, Necherami, Danyaltan Esafika, Alok Dramaka, Schedule Akahar, Danaktum Hushkar Aaron, Nijeg Naha Hokt. I confirm I am willing to take up the Office of Minister for Finance and Personnel and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Martino Muller is now Minister for Finance and I offer him my hearty congratulations. I call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in Section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of her party and of the Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, select uh, the Department for Education and I nominate Peter Weir. Will Mr. Peter Weir confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms and of the Pledge of Office? I confirm that I am willing to take up the Office of Minister of Education and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Peter Weir is now the Minister of Education and I offer him my hearty congratulations. I call on Mr. Mike Nesbitt as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his party and of the assembly. Mr. Speaker, I am not nominating to the executive. Yeah. 
The nominating officer for the Ulster Unionist Party has declined to nominate a member of his party. I will therefore assume that his party is declining all ministerial offices and that may arise under the formula and I will now move on to the next party. I call on Mr Martin McGuinness as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his party and of the Assembly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I select the Department of Infrastructure and I would like to nominate Chris Hazard as the Minister for that department. Will Mr Chris Hazard confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of the Minister for Infrastructure and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act. Mr Chris Hazard is now a Minister for the Infrastructure and I heartily congratulate him on his appointment. I call on Mrs Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of her party and of the assembly. Thank you very much. Uh, I select the Department for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs and I nominate Michelle McElveen. Will Michelle McElveen confirm that she is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? I confirm that I am willing to take up the Office of Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I confirm that Michelle McElveen is now Minister of the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. I call on Mr Colum Eastwood as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his political party and of the assembly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will not be nominating a minister to this executive. The nominating officer for the Social Democratic and Labour Party has declined to nominate a member of his party. I will therefore assume that his party in declining all, will be declining all ministerial offices that may arise under the formula, and I will now move on to the next party. I call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of her party and of the assembly. Thank you Mr Speaker. I select the Department for Communities and I nominate Paul Given. Yeah. Will the member confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the pledge of office? Mr Speaker, I can confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Communities and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr Paul Given is now the Minister for the Department of Communities and I offer him my hearty congratulations. I call on the Mr. Martin McGuinness as nominating officer for the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his party and of the assembly. Thank you Mr. Speaker. I select the Department of Health and nominate uh, Michelle O'Neill as the new Minister for Health. Will Michelle O'Neill confirm that she is willing to take up office and affirm the term of the Pledge of Office? I confirm that I am willing to take up the Office of Minister for Health 
and I affirm the ter terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Ni Northern Ireland Act 1998. I confirm that Michelle, Michelle O'Neill is now the Minister for Health, and I offer her my hearty congratulations. I thank the House for its patience, and that concludes the appointment of ministers under the De Hunt priest process. I offer my congratulations to all of those who have taken up office. The nominating officers of the Ulster Unionist Party and the Social Democratic and Labour Party were entitled to nominate a person to hold ministerial office, but declined to do so. In accordance with Standing Order 45A, I will now ask those parties if they choose to be recognised as part of the official opposition. I ask Mr Mike Nesbitt, does your party choose to be, choose to be part of, recognised as part of the official opposition? Mr Speaker, we do ask to be recognised as part of the official opposition and to initiate a new era for the Northern Ireland Assembly. We will not take our seat, as you know, at the executive table. We should, Mr Speaker, take our seat over there because First Minister McGuinness should sit beside First Minister Foster as they do so comfortably at Stormont Castle. I ask, I ask Mr Colm Eastwood, does your party choose to be recognised as part of the official opposition? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, we would like to be recognised as a, a member of the, the official opposition. Can I uh, congratulate all the, the ministers that have been appointed? Uh, we will, they will have our support when they deserve it, uh, but we will hold them to account uh, when we need to. Thank you. The Ulster Unionist Party and the Social Democratic and Labour Party will now be recognised as the official opposition. I have received correspondence from the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister in relation to the appointment of junior ministers. I will ask the clerk to read the letter. Pursuant to the procedure for the appointment of junior ministers specified in paragraph 3 brackets 1 of the determination made on 8th of December 1999, as approved by the Assembly on 14th of December 1999, we have appointed Alistair Ross, MLA, and Megan Fearon, MLA, as junior ministers in the Executive Office. Mr. Ross, to affirm the Pledge of Office. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I will ask. Alistair Ross is now junior minister. Uh, will uh, Megan Fearon affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? I confirm that I am willing to take up office of Junior Minister in the Executive Office, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in the Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Megan Fearon is now Junior Minister. That concludes the business of appointing the Junior Ministers. I offer to both of them my congratulations as they take up office. We will now 